Hi, this is Frank Taylor of Nature at Your Door. Nature at Your Door is on the road today, and I'm far from my home location in the Appalachian Mountains of Southwest Virginia. Right now, I'm in the village of San Bernardino in Switzerland, and I am going to be hiking up to a high, high valley in the mountains behind me. I'm gonna be talking about the diversity and adaptations of the plants that are able to grow in these harsh conditions. The Alps include an estimated 30,000 species of plants and animals with a great diversity from low elevation to very high elevation and specialized habitats and adaptations. There is an enormous variety. There's over 2,000 species of flowering plants in these alpine meadows, and that's gonna be my focus today. We're gonna to be considering the conditions and the habitat and how these plants adapt to grow in this unique place and have this amazing beauty and amazing diversity. Stay tuned. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. This episode is based on my hike to San Bernardino, but also includes some video and close-ups of flowers that I saw and observed elsewhere in the Alps. The hike began today from my family home on Lake Lugana, when a house that my grandfather built, where a mother was actually born in the master bedroom of that house. I took a train from Lugano to Pelanzona, a post bus up to San Bernardino. And this is one of my favorite all-time hikes that I've done many times. I took an out and back route today from the village on a trail that starts near the mineral water bottling plant where rich mineral waters are bottled and sold as a tonic and a health drink. The trail itself is about 10 miles round trip and includes almost 3,000 feet of climbing to get to the top of the pass. One can also continue on this trail instead of returning to your starting point to the village of Newfoundland. One of the great things about hiking in Switzerland is that the trails are notoriously well marked. And you can go from village to village, and in every village there'll be signs like this directing you to trails that are all around. And there's so many public trails, it's really endless. So today I'm heading up to Strek de Vignum and the Casina de Vignum is gonna be my first stop. I wanna compare this hike to the same hike I did on July 23rd, 2013. Notice the differences here as you watch this video. This summer, Europe was hit with a record hot summer and it was preceded by a winter with very little snow. And you can make your own conclusions about the climate change and climate impacts here at the end of this video. You can see here the amount of snow that's still on the ground, the rich green and the amount of water available versus today's hike in September 2023 that followed this drought. You can see coming up from the village that I'm in a thick pine forest. So I'm still below the tree line at about maybe six, 7,000 feet. We'll go up to about 9,000 feet today. This alpine environment where plants need to survive are characterized by low temperatures and a lot of continuous frost action from alternate freezing and thawing, high winds, high UVA radiation, uh, episodes of drought are normal with, with heat, and because the poor soils are very well drained. In newly exposed glacial soils, there are probably zero nutrients in it, and very little depth, and very little humus in it. Mosses are the first plants to colonize, and then soil building begins, and you can see that there's more soil as you go down the slopes of the mountain. One of the most common adaptations of alpine flowers to survive is to have a very large root or rhizome. These large roots and rhizomes can store carbohydrates underground 
and it ties to another adaptation of the plants where to produce a flower sometimes it takes the carbohydrates stored over three or four growing seasons because the growing seasons are very short. Other plants like sometimes the various tiny plants may have roots that are up to three feet deep. An alternate adaptation is the saxifrages which instead of having large root systems have small root systems but have evergreen and succulent leaves to store carbohydrates. The plants have amazing adaptations for freezing and surviving sub-zero wind chills and cold, cold temperatures. One way they do this is by increasing the solutes in their cells, which depresses the freezing point. Other plants may undergo super cooling, which prevents ice crystals from forming. Some other plants will dehydrate their cells and remove water into intercellular spaces so that when it freezes, the crystals do not open up inside the cell and destroy the cell. Other adaptations to wind and drying include very compact growth, almost like uh, little cushions. So often you see these plants they look like little cushions spread out across the rocky surfaces. Many will have small leaves, short stems, uh, deep roots, waxy coverings, and others may undergo cam photosynthesis, which is photosynthesis that occurs during daylight, but gas exchange only occurs at night in an effort to save water and prevent evaporation in hot sun and hot uh, in windy conditions. Many will have hairy leaves. In Edelweiss, this virtual symbol of the Alps, has many of these characteristics. This plant with its white furry flowers was immortalized in a song of the same name in the Sound of Music play and then following the film. It is covered in downy white hairs that protect it from drying out, from the wind, and from sunlight. There's intense competition for pollinators because there's fewer pollinators in very short growing seasons high in the Alps. So there's an emphasis on color and form. Bright colors and these pigments may also protect the plant from intense UV rays. Many flowers will alternate their flowering time so they're not flowering at the same time as other species. And some of the early flowers that start to flower immediately after the snow melts do so by preforming the flowers the season before, but not opening until the moment the sun comes out and melts the snow around them. Some flowers use that flower color as a form of exogenous heat capture or capturing heat from the external environment. So the flower color may be very, very important. Some of the adaptations to herbivory include spines and thorns, which also coincides with tight, hairy stuff that'll help prevent evaporation and again, protect from wind. And at the same time, help protect them from herbivory. Hello, okay. Matt. Hello. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on, Matt. Come on, There's a high cost of flower and seed production in these alpine plants because of the short growing seasons. So clonal propagation is very, very common where plants will grow and reproduce by spreading and underground stolons. Some of these clonal populations may come from a single plant that grew 2,000 years ago. So in effect, these clones are 2,000 years old. I've viewed this beautiful scenery from 10,000 feet at the top of a mountain overlooking this valley called Pizzucello, which means peak of the birds. And looking down, I can also see the old Roman road snaking through this valley to the pass above San Bernardino. With thousands of species of alpine wildflowers, there's so much to learn, each one with its own story of how it adapts to these harsh and brutal conditions of the high Alps. San Bernardino is one of my favorite 
villages to come to uh, to begin hikes from in this canton of Ticino. I grew up here speaking Italian. My mother was born here in this canton and San Bernardino is very close to the family house. And my mother and her parents too often would come here to vacation in the summer. Well, it looks like I'm gonna close out this episode. Got my raincoat on, my rain hat, I'm heading back down the mountain. Looks like I got some weather coming in. Thank you for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. I hope you learned a little bit about alpine life, the hazards and the extreme environment that's here and how these plants manage to scrape out survival and adapt to be able to survive in this awesome habitat. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.